Hey guys, this is Jen from Head to Toe and today I wanted to share with you my bridal makeup tutorial. I'm extra excited because this is actually really similar to the makeup I did for my own wedding. First of all, it's important that it's very photogenic so it looks good in film and photography and also so that it's pretty waterproof in case you have any stray tears that may occur during your wedding. I know I shed a few happy tears at mine too. So I hope you guys enjoy watching and if you'd like to see this look then stay tuned. So for the base makeup, I'm going to start off with a foundation primer. This is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer, and it's my current favorite primer. It has SPF 15, which I usually recommend no SPF for bridal makeup. However, this doesn't seem to have really bad flashback in my experience. And then I used Makeup Forever HD Foundation to cover the rest of my face. I recommend these two as my favorites for wedding makeup because they're both very photogenic. They don't have any SPF and won't have flashback, and just look really nice and natural in photos. So if you have normal to dry skin, I recommend the Makeup Forever HD foundation and if you have oilier skin this one's my favorite it's the matte velvet plus foundation if you want to see how I put on foundation then I'll leave an annotation right here and you can go over and click that video to cover up any spots or imperfections I used makeup forever full cover concealer and I also covered my under eye circles with the Tarte Maracuja creaseless concealer and then to set all of the base makeup on my face I used Tarte smooth operator powder next I'm taking Too Faced shadow insurance and I'm applying this eyeshadow primer all over my eyelids. This will help the makeup to last all day, which is really important for when you're getting married. To create a base for the eyeshadow, I'm going to take this pencil eyeliner and create a half moon shape on my eyelid. Before this eyeliner completely dries out, I'm going to blend out the edges just a little bit. Next, I'm taking my Urban Decay Naked Eyeshadow Palette and I'm using this color Buck. And I'm going to apply this over the entire eyelid, starting from this crease area and blending down. Next, I'm going to take this lighter shimmery shade called Sin, and using the same brush I was just using, I'm just going to lightly dust this on the inner half of my eye. This is going to highlight the ball of the eye and give a little bit more dimension to the look. I'm taking this shade called Dark Horse, and I'm going to use this to contour the outer corner of my eye. So I'm angling my brush in toward my eye like this. And then I'm using the point of the brush to push the color upward at the outer corner. And just softly blend that into the arch. I'm also taking this blending brush to just blur all of the lines. Blending can really take some patience, but it's going to make the biggest difference in the end. So make sure you blend, blend, blend until everything is completely smooth. To highlight the eyes, I'm using this color Virgin, and I'm going to apply this right underneath the brow bone. So for the highlight color, you don't want to use anything with too much shimmer. This one's a bit satiny and it's about the most shimmer I want for a highlight. Any more than this and it's going to catch the light in a bad way. So go for a matte color or one that's just barely satin. You'll also notice I only brought the highlight to about right here because I don't want it to catch too much light here either. We want it to reflect light like light would naturally hit your face. So we were only just highlighting at the top of your brow bone. I'm also taking the tip of the brush and I'm going to bring just a little bit of that color into the inner corners of the eye. Next, I'm applying a gel eyeliner. This is the Wet n Wild Gel Liner. One tip to keep in mind is that if you have mono lids or small hooded eyelids, you can use a thicker line of eyeliner. And if you have a larger crease or a higher crease, use a thinner line to look more natural. And then I'm also making it so that the outer half of the wing is a little bit thicker and it should taper as it goes toward the middle. To add a bit of brightness to my eyes, I'm taking this nude pencil and I'm applying it to my waterline. I'm using the Rimmel Scandalized Pencil in Nude. This is going to counteract some of the redness in your eyes and make your eyes look larger and more awake. Now for the lower lash line, I'm taking some of the gel eyeliner from before. I'm going to start on the outer corner of my lower lash line and I'm going to work this into the lower lash line until about the midway point right here. It should start off thicker and again gradually get thinner as you go in. Bring the eyeliner up to meet the top wing of the top lash line. 
Even if your eyelid droops down a little bit, you can still fake it by bringing the line up. So that's creating the illusion of a more lifted eye. Now I'm taking a smaller, dense eyeshadow brush and I'm taking Dark Horse again. And I'm just going to pat this over the eyeliner. That'll help it to last a lot longer and smoke out the edges so it looks more natural. Next, I'm going to apply my Maybelline Cat Eyes Waterproof Mascara. It's really, really important to use a waterproof mascara in case you get any tears during the ceremony. I also recommend buying a brand new tube of mascara for your wedding just because you don't want any clumps and you want it to look as nice as possible. When applying mascara to your lower lashes, it helps to press downward on them for just a couple seconds. That'll work to help curl your lashes and make your eyes look bigger. Next, I'm going to fill in my brows, so I'm just brushing out the hairs first in the right direction. And then I'm going to take my pencil and just fill in exactly in the shape that I want it to be. I want to create a small arch here and just make little strokes in the direction that your hair is growing. Next, I'm going to apply these Winx Number no. 7 Crisscross Lashes. To finish off the false lashes, I'm going to take a pen type eyeliner and I'm going to go back in and fill in any gaps that were left by the lash glue to really seamlessly blend in the lashes with your own lash line. For blush, I'm going to apply this plummy shade from Tarte called Blushing Bride. I thought it was appropriate for the tutorial. Since it's so pigmented, I'm going to use a skunk brush. These kinds of brushes don't hold quite as much pigment, so it'll go on a lot more naturally and evenly. Starting at the back of your cheeks where your ears are, I'm just going to place this downward and blend forward. Just tapping this into my skin. It's really better to start off with less and work your way up for more because when you have on too much blush, it's a lot harder to take it away. For this look, I'm concentrating most of the color right here on top of my cheekbones, about halfway between my ear and the front of my cheek. That's going to give you a natural blushing effect, but still add a little bit of contouring shape to your face without using a bronzer. As with the eye makeup, you're also going to want to make the blush a little bit darker than what you would wear on a day-to-day -day basis, because film and photography really washes out all of the colors on your skin. So in order to have that natural, glowing look in pictures, you're going to want to do it just one notch darker than you would typically wear. For lips, the most important thing is going to be long lasting lip makeup, especially because you're going to be wearing it all night, you want it to look perfect, and you don't really want your lipstick to kiss off on your husband at the big moment at the end of your wedding ceremony. So I'm going to start off by using a lip pencil, and this is the Urban Decay 24-7 Glide On Lip Pencil in the shade Illegal. I usually start out by outlining the lips and then filling in the entire lip. Next, you can take whatever lipstick you want. I promise you can do a bright red lip, you can do a natural lip color, it can be a moisturizing color, it can be a more pigmented color, but we are going to make this last all day. The way we're going to do that is to take your lipstick, I'm using my Maybelline Color Whisper lipstick in Rose of Attraction, and I'm just going to apply this like I normally would. Then I'm going to take ordinary toilet paper and I'm going to just blot my lips. And that's once. Then we're going to apply the lipstick again. That's number two. Apply the lipstick one more time. Now we're going to take our last piece of toilet paper and I'm actually going to pull it apart. So we just want one ply. <laughs> so I'm going to actually place this over my lips and then powder on top of it. The blotting steps will help the pigment adhere to your lips without leaving in all of those emollient ingredients in the lipstick to hydrate it. And then the powder at the end is going to set the lipstick just enough so that it'll be long lasting no matter what lipstick you're wearing. So this is the final look. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope this helped for those of you who want to do your own makeup on your wedding day. If you want to see more tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video if you found it helpful. This is Jen and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye! I got these ears at Disney World on my honeymoon with my husband and I held on to it. Do you think they're awesome? <laughs> take off.
take off one sheet. <clears throat> oh yeah, that looks nice and bridal, I think. <laughs>